Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum, where we've had a bit of a shuffle around. Now, Brad, you weren't here, but this is a bit different. No, you say a bit. I mean, I think literally <laughs> everything has moved, pretty much. We moved basically all the cars. Actually, the two Fords have stayed where they were, but basically we've moved everything else on the Benpack Auto Stackers just to mix it up a little bit. There are methods to my madness, but this time we decided not to film it all because we do that quite often. But today we're actually saying goodbye to a few Schmimobiles. In fact, I think maybe four cars are heading out today. Four cars, something like that. Plenty of space for more, right? Yeah, good logic, <laughs> solid logic. So today, first up, we're gonna recap the Lotus Amira and where that's gone, because it's not here right now. Then we're gonna be heading to McLaren Hatfield with this Senna and also to Aston Martin Hatfield with the GT8. They both need to get their annual services. They're on exactly the same schedule. I think even last year we took them together as well. But we're also saying goodbye now to the Lego McLaren Senna. It is going to be heading back to the McLaren Technology Center. It has been wonderful having this here, but it does technically mean two McLaren Senna's departing from the Sch Museum at the same time. Yeah, that's true. That's a bit weird actually, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not like it's a toy one, uh, uh, say a toy one. <laughs> it's, it's a big toy, obviously. Like most, most grown up of yeah. toys. Ever. I mean, not a small one leaving. We're yeah. talking two full size McLaren Centers. Two Senna actual there. size McLaren Centers. But this is going to be making a space, a space that will be filled by something purple quite soon. Mm. Sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds very good. It sounds very good. So we need to, I think, firstly, recap back to the Amira, what's happened with that this morning. And so the day begins with the bright yellow car parked just in here. I tell you what, it is much smaller in this parking space than when I've got the Lusso or even something like the SF90 here. The SF90 would easily be out to at least over these white lines. But let's come around, pop some stuff into the boot of this thing, unlock, press and hold, pops up the rear hatch as we've seen through all of this in the induction tour for a few things back in here. Hopefully I can manage this. There's a decent amount of space actually. It feels like you couldn't fit that much in here, but you actually can. And then this lovely, lovely interior, because we need to take this car over to see Topaz. So I managed to escape up to this point with no issues, no chips or anything up front, thankfully, but let's get this started. Yeah, sounds good. Let's take it on over and go and, uh, what's that about? Contact the service center for a regular checkup the SOS call service system. Interesting. But yes, it's not the longest of drives from here to Topaz. Let's go get this car taken over. Well, the little Lotus Amira has made it to Topaz detailing, a rite of passage for any new Schmiemobile to come here for the installation of paint protection film. Now today the weather is pretty dreary and you might be wondering why have I been driving this car now about 400 miles without any PPF installed and to be honest it was a bit of a risk but basically down to the timing because I took delivery of this car in the days just before Christmas with the closures over the Christmas and New Year period it was not possible to bring it in sooner so here we are today and thankfully I have managed to escape unscathed absolutely nothing by way of rock chips or anything like that at the front although I have had some in the very early days of the life of owning a car before, so I definitely recommend doing it from brand new. Now we're going to be fitting high impact area paint protection film. So we're talking, for example, the front bumper, all of the inserts around the grill, even on the headlights, we'll be doing the bonnet, we'll be doing the wings, we'll be doing the mirror caps, we'll be doing the side skirts, perhaps something as well down here. In fact, you can see it comes from factory with a little bit of film just here in front of the rear arches. Obviously all of the areas that are vulnerable, especially when you have sticky tires like Sport Cup 2s. But I always recommend this with a car like this. You want it to stay looking brand new, you want to stay looking perfect as long as it possibly can. It's well worth installing PPF and I would never go without on the Schmiemobiles, hence bringing it in today where this car will be heading shortly into the wash bay to go and get cleaned up before it heads in for PPF to be installed and we'll see it again a couple of days further down the line. As you can probably tell, it's really cold out here so I better go and get the keys, drop this off and go and get back over towards the barn. Back to now, two cars, pretty easy to get them both out. We will get them unplugged, we will get them started, we will get out on the road. It is perfect weather, isn't it, for track tires? Yep, rainy, miserable, mm -hmm. as usual. The big question though, yeah. obviously Tom and yourself are driving these two and I'm taking up the VRS. Who's driving what? That's what I'm intrigued by. Is that by. really a question? It is. It's not really a question. 
in slippy roads. <laughs> I'm going to do this <laughs> extra Fair. safe. But you know what? I get a double win because if I'm driving in the center, which doesn't make all that much noise, I get to hear the noise of that. That's true. Uh, to be honest, I'm winning the most because I get to hear both and see both from the outside. That would be really cool on the road. We're going to have to hook up a camera in some form so that we can see it all. Right, it's cold, it's early. Should we go on with it? Let's do it. Let's get some cars started. Good to go? Let's go, let's do it. It's so noisy in here, just two V8s and I need to hit shut it up so we can head out into what I'm assuming is some pretty miserable weather. Now, ordinarily, this would be where we hear some lovely noise from the two V8s in front, but in this weather, I don't think we're gonna get too much at all. It's pretty grim out, as you can see. Here's a cool little combo. These two just rolling up the road together. Pretty mental, two big wings, two pretty raw V8 experiences. Well, I say pretty, very raw V8 experiences. But it's cool to see them out on the road. Let me just crack the windows a little bit as we sort of head through the industrial residential estate that these dealers are based at. Just hear the V8, I guess, of, oh no, I've lost them. We're now following a Mini Cooper, which is fine. But it means we don't get to see the back of the GT8. Although, I'm fairly certain you should still be able to... Oh, look at my steer. Ferrari HRO in. New dealership being built here in Hatfield, which is very cool, actually, to see that here. We've got, what else? Another HRO building. Must be current Ferrari or another part of the Ferrari showroom, because there's definitely Ferraris outside of that. Pretty cool. So Tim's gone the wrong way. <laughs> um, Tom and myself do this drive way too often. So we know exactly where we're going, whether that's dropping off a service, etc. But here we are at Aston Martin McLaren. Nicely next door to each other. This makes life pretty easy. Well, we've made it. That was a pretty wet and interesting journey, really. Yeah, it is awful out. I said <laughs> on the video, this is not the conditions for either two of these cars. Especially not when you have these kind of things. No, essentially, I mean, they're track cars. They're, they're made to be enjoyed on the track. The tires aren't really made for this kind of weather. No, those basically look like semi-slicks. I tell you what, when I was driving, watching the amount of water getting sprayed up by them, I was like, this is not ideal. Um, but this car has been a few times this year, obviously the dampers, we talked extensively about that. It's now the fourth annual service for the McLaren Senna. Um, it needs the MOT as well. You're only allowed to drive a car with an expired MOT. It expired a few days ago if you have a pre-booked MOT. So obviously pre-booked, ready to be done with the service. You want to get those in sync if you can. So we'll get those lined up properly. It's only done in total about 550 miles since the last service. Um, I want to do more miles with it next year, obviously. It spent more than half of this year not being able to go anywhere, so we'll get it back on the road properly. The GT8 is now on 11,000 miles. This is its sixth annual service. Wow. Six years old. It's you crazy. Kind of, you kind of forget, don't you? Because it's, it's still a new it's timeless. modern looking car. It, it doesn't feel like it's six years old. Such a cool car, but also it's only driven about 550 miles in the last 12 months. Sounds like these two need to do some yeah. more miles. I mean, that's the general norm. If a car isn't going on a big road trip, I still want it to drive 500 miles, maybe a thousand miles, because it's better to keep, get the cars driven, get them running, get everything just flowing through them. Because if you leave cars like these parked, that's when you get the gremlins. That's when they start going wrong. That's why we drive them all the time. That's why we have our spreadsheet that we talk about all the time. Um, but yeah, should be a routine service. We're not aware of anything wrong with either of them, actually. No rattles, no creaks, no problems, nothing to report on the service books. Should nice and easy. Good. Should we go inside? Because it's starting to get yeah. like... It's cold, it's wet. And rainy. It's England, every day right now. Right, let's go in and then we'll say farewell to these and all hop on board the Skoda to head back. It's Skoda time. Oh wait, it's sitting behind Tom, bad idea. I'm probably gonna have no knee space. Over there is an Artura. Artura, Artura or Artura? Oh. I actually don't know officially. I, d I don't think anybody really officially knows. <laughs> Supercars in the rain. There's a lot of that these days. There are lots of new dealers opening around here. Yes, yeah, so I was talking about the Ferrari that we drove past. H Which is Ferrari exciting. Is yeah. Very cool. It's quite exciting, because that's probably where I'll take delivery of the 296. 
Oh, oh really? It should be opened and ready by then. Okay. What about the uh, Purasangwe? Where's that coming from? Well, that will be there as well, right? Okay. But I mean, everything so I from 296 onwards. I, I don't know what's coming when, I just know what's coming. What's happened with the nav, Brad? I'm just navving myself. You're navving yourself? Yeah. Way, I've not gone the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> You've not gone the way I would have gone. Yeah, we're going this way. You want to go through the tunnel, but this doesn't do tunnel runs. It's very exciting. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot we're in this. 12 seconds later. We're back here, two cars down, three cars down technically, because I dropped the Amira off earlier. True. This is off next. It is. So we're waiting at the moment for the forklift from Hire Mac, who yep. unloaded it before. The guys are outside actually to, to get this loaded into the trailer shortly, but it will mean we need to unplug it. Um, I can't remember, maybe it's already unplugged. Uh, we will need to remove our Lego chocks because this is the reverse of when it arrived. Yeah. Full process. It is fun that there are literally chocks made out of Lego bricks. Even that's probably like <laughs> a couple of hundred Lego bricks. Yeah, <laughs> it is it like, and again, just how much design and thought would have gone into that? I know it's probably quite simple for the Lego guys, but I wouldn't someone, have been able to make idea. that. I don't really know where to put that safely. Actually, do you know what? Given it's still sitting here. Yeah, let's not for now. <laughs> no chances, even though the garage is completely flat. Yeah. So we are going to be saying goodbye to the Lego Center today, which has been amazing. A little birdie tells me by the end of the week, there's a certain Danish car that should be here. Mm -hmm. There's a bright yellow thing that might have PPF. Yes. There are two cars that will hopefully be back from service. I hope so. It's going to be quite full. Yeah, in about another anything. week. I don't think you have. The STO oh, is back. Uh, F1 car. F1 car. That we'll should be, be back, back very yeah, soon. Yeah, at some point. So it's going to yeah. be really full. It is. We You're do. going to have a lot of garage to manage. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Lots of cars to drive. <laughs> it's Just a good thing. Not the F1 car, obviously. It's a very good thing. Yeah, I like this. And how cool does the GT500 now look de-stickered? I know it looked really cool stickered, but it, it just feels looks... more like it fits in with the garage. Yeah. Um, so there's a spot under there for the GT Black Series when it comes back. That's the intention. I miss that car. It will be here at some point. The Clio V6 will eventually go back where Brad's car is. Okay. That makes sense. And yep. then that spot will be for a certain future Ferrari that I've not revealed the spec of yet. Ooh, okay. 296. I haven't yes. actually finished the spec yet, but the 296 will sit there next to the SF90. They go there because then they can be plugged onto the main sockets at the back for the battery charging. The Lusso can tuck back in next to them. Three Ferraris together, three Mercs together, Fords together, Astons together, Clios together, Lotuses together, hypery stuff together. It's almost like you thought about this for a very long time. Far too many hours. <laughs> right, let's work out what we need to do to shuffle this to get it lined up. It's raining outside. We'll get it lined up towards the shutter so we can take it out. Now then, bit of the process. First, chocks out. I guess we put these, the Lego chocks, in the Lego seat. That would make sense, I guess. A lot of people are wondering about bricks. This is actually glued together. It does stay together. Although I'm wondering, like, is there one loose Yeah, so as much as we've tried <laughs> desperately to remove the odd brick and swap one around somewhere, just to see if anyone notices, we failed. Yeah, and it does steer, so it's going to need a few backwards and forwards. But you can steer it. Should we have done tire pressures? <laughs> I mean, it's not going on track. I think we'll be okay. The next problem is that we have to push on Lego bricks. Yeah, can't okay. push on the wing, obviously. We're gonna just send the camera for a ride. Should we, should we put it there, facing on the back, then they can see us? <laughs> struggling like, yeah. Okay, so I'll take this corner here. This is... This is Okay, this isn't, this isn't too, not bad. too bad, but I need to come through here. You do. If you stay there and steer, I think we can do this. They now can't <laughs> see you. Sorry, you're stuck with me, guys. Are we going into the office here? Okay. Are we going to have, have the window? Sorry, I just burned my hand on the exhaust. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, how dare you? Right, Brad, window getting smashed. Wait, for, oh no, we haven't quite smashed it yet. There we go. <laughs> but I did burn my Ow. hand on a very hot <laughs> exhaust. I'm like the... <laughs> yeah, ruined. <laughs> ruined. Not the best power steering in the world, eh? No. Right, it's good for the moment until we have a forklift. Okay, so we'll wait for the forklift. I guess we'll join you guys when that arrives and we'll see this scarily loaded up and... Yes. Yeah, dangling in midair again. <laughs> Well, the good news is that we have a forklift. We've got the team from Hire Mac here, exactly who we'd booked for the unloading when it was originally brought out. We'll get the forklift brought out of here in just a second, which is used as part of this process. If you haven't seen that, it's quite unusual, but it's not a car. It is, of course, 
made out of Lego bricks. So it's a little bit different to what you might be thinking. Anyway, this will come out. Uh, in the meantime, behind me actually, is the truck being prepared for the reloading of the Senna. Are you ready for all of this? I'm ready. It's a police forklift truck. It's genuinely a police forklift truck. Oh, Flashing the blue lights blue. have stopped now. Oh. <laughs> He's not arresting anyone anymore. He's not arresting anyone anymore. It's Nobody fine. Nobody will believe us. But I've never seen a forklift with blue flashing lights. And right. yes, not blue. Can I also just say it's really cold? <laughs> I'm sure they can see from the way the camera's doing it. Maybe My not hand the stabilization. is genuinely shaking. Yeah. You, uh, you really, maybe you okay. should go back inside. Well, let's go and work out this um, <laughs> process. The one we prepared earlier, just the other side of all of this is so cool with this open area. Come through here ready to be taken out. Just got to be careful with the rain because of course it's Lego and there's no glass. It's not exactly waterproof. So we need to look after this one and do it very delicately. Out it goes. Sad times. We shall miss this. It's been a lot of fun having it here. Are you the brake back there? No, no, no. I'm definitely not. <laughs> no, so, I, I don't want to be the one responsible for not letting this hit something. Yeah. <laughs> As many double negatives as you can. Oh dear, I'm standing in a puddle. Yes. That was not smooth. <laughs> this is kind of the process, although not helped by the amount of rainwater out here at the moment. The uh, forks literally go underneath it where there are some metal blocks to then lift it up. The center is floating. We didn't really catch that, but you'll have to take my word for it. We're standing the other side of the uh, truck where it's going to be loaded in a moment. It will be put into this space sideways. A little bit different to the normal process. Here it goes. This is a bit scary because it's half a million Lego bricks, which is tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Yeah. <laughs> Low yeah. flying center. <laughs> it's quite an unusual process because it goes into the truck sideways. I wonder if you could winch it into a normal trailer. There must be a reason why it's done this way, right? The way it's made probably to do with flexing and things I'm not sure it's got it's built around a frame sad to see it go but it's actually remarkably easy we book out the higher mech forklift for a couple of hours and it takes about five minutes yes yeah <laughs> and this just comes in and then it will get put down on the deck and that's that easy peasy is that it is that all I they do I think that's it I think it's in does it go down it probably has to be sat down on the wooden blocks to then get the forks out from underneath They've done this before. These guys know what they're doing. We're just the spectators today. Down on deck, forks being slid out. Oh, they actually go out easily. That's interesting to see how this is done. You can see those metal brackets underneath. Clever. And then they've got the hooks to lock it down on the place. And you can see straight through because it's a center with glass windows in the doors and with Lego calipers and discs. I mean, I still can't get over that one. That is so cool how they've managed to construct an entire caliper using just these little bricks that we make houses and stuff with. But also quite perfectly impressive. formed and it just, it's right, yeah. it fits. It's where it should be. Yes. Well, that it's gets all, strapped down. It's all perfect. And then off it will go. I had never seen the handbrake caliper at the back. Even that's obviously also made from Lego bricks. Fun. Curtains shutting, time to say farewell. Last glance before it's gone. Back to the McLaren Technology Center. Sad to buy Lego Center. Yeah. There he goes. It's See ya. Just, it's just been so normal having it sat in the lineup. It doesn't even look like a Lego car when you just scan the yeah. It just looks normal. It's but. helpful having another parking space back though. Yes. Yeah, yeah that is true. <laughs> right. That's needed. I guess we should probably get you some warmth because you yeah, are freezing. Yeah, I'm freezing. I'm freezing. Yeah. Right. I'm going to bail out. Okay. <laughs> See you shortly. The center is gone. It is. Sad times. It's. Yeah, changed. We now have a STO here in place. Yeah, so of... we've, we've done a bit of moving. The STO was over there, which is now here. We've got the MSRT Transit Custom inside as well. Yeah. Has anything else changed? Uh, I've got coffee on my jumper. Uh, that was there from this morning, but it's got worse. <laughs> oh, well. That's changed. <laughs> it's what it is. So we've talked about freeing up a space. Yes. We've been talking a little bit about maybe freeing up another space. Yes, which is sad times, but these conversations I should, happen. I should give some more background. I talked repeatedly when I popped the STO up for sale about effectively being keen to move into more projects like that. Projects, cars that we can bring back from pretty sorry states, yep. making something really nice, cars that I certainly looked up to when I was younger, I think you as well, we're oh, the same kind of age. So. Um, 
But with the decision made to bring this back... That, that's a lot of money that we now don't have for things like a Clio V6. Yes. So, this is where it's certainly on my mind of whether we're going to say goodbye to something else as well. Why and I'm we, not sure. Is, is it worth running through? Why don't we have a quick like, couple of seconds on your thoughts of each? I mean, 675, I think it's fairly easy to say that's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's the car I've owned for the longest. First car I spec'd in my own paint colour. Like, special thing, 18,000 miles on it. SF90, as you know, I absolutely love. About 5,000 miles on it. And only you've only it. just got it, really. Yeah, it's like so. 10, 9 months or so old. Lots of things planned. In fact, something really cool planned with that yep. in the next week or two. Yep, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Clio V6. Again, we've just finished the project. There's more modifications. No way. More modifications needed. Yes. Plus more driving needed. It yes. needs to do its ring. It needs to do everything. Um, C63 Black Series has been part of all of the, obviously, Black Series tour content. We've never really done the project with it that we intended. Maybe that's something to look at. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah, we did, we did obviously talk about respraying it, tidying things up, which hasn't really come. I, I think it's fair to say that no one's really driven it as much as we thought we would. No, but it's been part of everything with like the SLS, yes. for example. The SLS has done, I must have driven this. I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to guess about 16, 17,000 miles. A lot. Everything with that car, that's a permanent forever car for sure. Yeah. Like epic awesomeness. Heritage RS, I know you're not the biggest fan. We talk I'm, I'm going to say nothing. I'm you're going to be say, like, just get rid of that. I'm going to say absolutely nothing because that would happily fund a nice couple of cars. I mean, they it are would. way over what you paid for it new. Yes, that's, that's somewhere verging on double what it was new and would probably fund buying a 1M, an E46, something yes. else. But just <laughs> anyone that says you're just here for flipping cars and for the money and doesn't really care about them, that's prime example that you got. I've tried to make you sell this so much because <laughs> it's worth twice what it was new and you just won't. I love it. GT500, obviously, we've only just brought it in from yes. America. Do you know what, though? The values of these things are crazy high. Like crazy they are, high. especially here in the UK, because yeah. you, they don't come here as, you know, from the dealership. So the import charges and that all adds quite a lot to the cost. But big time, you know, whatever this might be worth, your gumball memories, everything you've done with it in the USA, that's got to be worth more than yeah, it's, selling it, surely. Obviously, the Vantage Roadster is not going anywhere. So no. let's move straight we, on. We the can skip GT8, that one. We'll pretend the GT8 is back here. Should we sell the Mazda? <laughs> what do you think, Brad? Can we sell the Mazda? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we, we skipped the GTA, but the GTA, again, super special. Yeah. Impossible. That's not going anywhere. That's not worth anything. So. That, that's, that might fund a part for a car, but what, not the what car. About, what about our friend's number plates? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're joking. <laughs> he might be. I don't know if I am. I know you're watching. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> the Sport 190 carbon body and the Elise Final uh, Cup 250. Yeah. Those are not mine, so I can't no. sell those. Same that with the is TBR not mine. And that the is Jack. not mine. That is never going anywhere. Even though it's worth loads of money, it's never going anywhere. End of story. Um, but again, Senna, funny, that's worth different in different markets, right? I think this is what I've It's actually a really bit interesting. In the US, Ford GTs are worth absolute fortunes. Obviously, demand is crazy, crazy high. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot of, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of them anywhere. Um, but in Europe, they sit a little less than in the USA, in, right? Yes, they cost more to buy and they sell for less. It's bizarre. So if hmm. anybody in Europe ever wants to sell a Ford GT, send it to America. And if anyone in America ever wants to buy a Ford GT, buy it from, from Europe. Europe. <laughs> there we go. Um, STO. <laughs> I mean, that's just come back. That's not going anywhere. We can skip that one. Behind there is the Lusso. I tell you what, the demand for the Lusso would be high, but I don't think we can sell the only V12. No. No, no I mean, there might be one. another one coming at some point. Again, I think well, that would be really cool. Well, there is. is probably two years away. But how cool would it be to have those next to each other, maybe? I don't, no, know, if that will, I don't know if that's A lot of people have long, asked, like, am I going to sell the Lusso now? But the Pura Sangway is so far away yeah. that it's like, there's no point in that. You then lose that practical, dailyable Ferrari in the meantime. Which is the most practical car here right now. It is. Well, mm, transit. True, true, true. And I was going to say Focus RS. But again, so the Lusso, not. What else is missing? Senna. Senna. Senna, I don't really want to sell. I talked about recently, like, if somebody came along and said, hey, here's a strong price. The right money. The yeah. right money, then I would consider it. I'd sit down and have a long conversation with myself and think about it. <laughs> you would say, just sell it. <laughs> I don't think I would, actually. No? No, I think the Senna's got such a special part of the channel, of the Shmi 150 brand. That like, it's literally the reason for the colour yeah. of the logos. It's, it's, yeah, it's very true. And I, I think it would be a bit wrong not having that. Same as the Ford GT. Look, it, it's not my favourite car. I can't even fit in it, so I can't drive, yeah. you know. But I, it would be wrong it not being here. And on that note, GT Black Series, epically part of the channel. Oh, I miss that so much. Um, I mean, I've said that, I think I said it earlier in this video or the last one. Like, I miss that car so much. So, yeah, that can't go anywhere. Do you know what? Long zoom. 
on the channel logo over yes. there. Sorry if I've made everyone feel dizzy here. <laughs> that graphic of four cars is the center of the Ford GT, the SLS, and the GT Black Series brought into one. So it'd yeah. be kind of wrong to sell any of those. Right, we would back have out. to change the entire logo. So <laughs> I think from walking through, and I'm not going to make any conclusions because this is to be decided by you over time, I guess. But from what we've just walked through, I think there's possibly one car that maybe could depart to allow room for I think I know which you might be thinking, but I think we're going to leave it at that for the moment. Okay. I don't think we're going to point at anything in particular at this moment in time. Just look at everything, let people work it out. And we haven't obviously mentioned the Zembo, but the Zembo is not going anywhere. No, no. That's a couple of years minimum of ownership. And then we see what happens down the line. Yes. You never know. Yeah. I mean, we also have the Skoda outside, but I don't think Skoda would appreciate it if we sold their long-term test car either. No, we also have MSRT's Luton van still, and I don't think they'd appreciate if we sold that <laughs> either. So, yeah. For anyone that does want to leave cars with us, we won't sell them, I promise. <laughs> well, we've never done so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I know, I'm proving it. It is colourful. We do have some good spaces. We've got the GT Black Series space here. We've got the GT8 space. I don't know if they'll stay in exactly that order. Then we're going to have the Senna and the Zenvo and the F1 car behind. And it's all good. Yeah, yeah. It's fitting, everything works. I we like so. this. Yeah, freeing up space, everything's starting to slowly fall into place. Do you know what I just completely missed? Something really important, I'm guessing. No, something very bright yellow. The Amira. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Amira's not. Again, brand new car just arrived. It's, it's not it's going anywhere. Hundreds of miles. I at want the moment, to enjoy so. that. People, people think that I'm just going to flip it, but I have never flipped a car. You ever. haven't. No. Every single car I've ever bought, obviously cars here have been around for a while, but minimum I've ever owned a car was six months, I think, with my GT3. And even okay, in those six yeah. months, I did 10,000 kilometers, six and a half thousand miles. Which is more than most people do in years, years let's yeah. be honest. And um, yeah, it goes back to the conversation I brought up about the focus. You, you're not here just to sell stuff. As and much contrary, as do you know what? Contrary to what people think, I actually lost about 20 grand on the GT3. Yeah. But a European car, right? So yeah. they're not, again, in the UK, you probably would have made 20 it's grand. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. But no, European cars, it sank something like 20, maybe it was 20,000 euros sank off list price below list it's a lot people don't in six months that. though yeah people don't realize that oh, that was a hefty pill to swallow at the time yeah have we missed anything else i think that covers it i hope that covers it and we've not just done something really dumb i feel, I feel like we're there <laughs> do we need to run to the spreadsheet and go see what we've got <laughs> all i know is if we have missed something that probably is a good way of saying you need to sell a car because we can't remember them all no, I don't. I don't buy that. We'll have missed something really important. <laughs> I don't buy that at all. After plenty of waffle, we've moved everything around. It's exciting times as always, even though today four cars have gone on different travels. A mirror at PPF, that should be back in a few days. Senna and GT8 back in the next day or two. In addition to those, what is going on over there? It's about to get dangerous. Anyway, on that note, let's leave it there. Until next time.